September temperatures around the globe were record-breaking, as they have been for the last five months. In a newly published report, the European Climate Agency writes that last month the anomaly was even greater, at almost a full degree centigrade above the average. Antonia Kerrigan joins us on set for a closer look. Antonia, this is worrying on so many levels. Absolutely. Uh, in short, as you say, what we've seen is rising temperatures across the board, including in the summer. But more specifically, September was the furthest removed from what we might call normal, the most anonymous, the most unseasonable, you might say, unseasonably warm. If we look at this graph uh, released by the Copernicus Climate Change Programme, the horizontal axis reflects a um, what we might call a normal temperature. That's the average from 1990 to 2020. So we're already looking, of course, at a warmed planet. Um, and these are the these are the uh, deviations from that. And as you can see, there's an upward trend. But 2023 was a real spike. Uh, scientists are saying that this is very worrying. One has said uh, gone so far as to say that it's a death sentence for people and ecosystems. Uh, now that may sound like rhetoric. It's not just rhetoric. One uh, example is that only yesterday, um, Public Health France released its figures. Uh, for deaths in, two th in um, September 2023, in this uh, offending month. And they said that there were 60 excess deaths in the period that uh, included an eight-day heat wave early in September. Now, we can't attribute all of those deaths necessarily to the heat, but it's a trend that's not explained elsewhere. So that's particularly worrying. Uh, September also represented 1.75 degrees warmer than pre-industrial levels. Now, of course, we remember from 2015 uh, commitments made in the Paris Agreement. The magic number we need to stay under is 1.5 degrees of warming. Uh, and the UN has also come out today with a report, uh, a global stock take to preempt the talks that are coming up to the COP28, of course, saying that we're on track for 1.7 degrees of warming. So this month of September wasn't wholly unrepresentative. Um, and I think what's really frightening is it's, it's not, from what I understand, it's not, it's not just an issue of heat of being hotter. It's also what that means for precipitation, drought, flooding, you know, the more drought there, like we saw in Greece and in Turkey this summer, right? There was, there's a several years accumulated drought. And then when it does rain, the rain can't be absorbed in the soil because it's so dry. And then you have these massive flooding after a wildfire. Um, yeah. And it's almost like catastrophe after, after a catastrophe, uh, which isn't necessarily just the temperatures. I mean, it's everything around it. Well, the big problem then as well is that all of our climate action has to be divided between what we call mitigation, which is axing fossil fuels, reducing our emissions, and of course, adaptation, which is accepting there is this increase, we're already seeing the effects, the human effects, the ecological effects, and that we need to adapt our lives to be able to live within that and manage that. And so that's a real balance that they're going to have to strike ongoingly at COP28, balancing between adaptation and mitigation. Yeah, and so much of the time that adapting involves non-ecologically friendly necessarily, right? So anyway, big conundrum. And good luck to those trying to figure that one out. Thank you so much, Antonia Kerrigan, for joining us.